Allies? What allies? That's the focus of tonight's angle. Now, whenever Biden meets with world leaders, especially when he's over in Europe, you know America is going to get taken to the cleaners one way or another. And today was no exception. During his meeting with the G7, okay, this is what went down. First, before Biden even showed up, America got lectured by several of our so-called allies. So it was France, Canada, and the UK. They felt the need to respond to the Supreme Court's decision to overturn Roe versus Wade with very sharp criticism. Now, for Boris Johnson, who has single-handedly destroyed the Tory party, joining the dog pile on the U.S. for him, well, that's really rich, because he didn't tell you that the United Kingdom in many ways has tighter restrictions on abortion than many states in the United States, because they require two doctors to sign off on an abortion in the U.K. Now, Boris's critique is a transparent effort to bolster Biden and to appear as a unifier in pushing for more Ukraine aid. Good luck in unifying anyone on that. Now, this isn't the first time, nor it will likely be the last, that our allies in name only have expressed strong opposition to America's conservative populist movement that Ben was just referencing. Now, they hated Trump, of course, for a lot of reasons, but chief among them was his demand that Europe spend more on their military after decades of essentially what was free riding on the United States. When you remember back on Trump when he would uh, go over there, he was pretty pragmatic. He was unabashedly pro-American, and he was consistently blunt. Those are three qualities the Europeans generally loathe about us. Now, Europeans preferred presidents who badmouth or apologize for America. First, Obama. In America, there's a failure to appreciate Europe's leading role in the world. America has shown arrogance and been dismissive even derisive. Our country still struggles with the legacies of slavery and segregation, the past treatment of Native Americans. We have at times been disengaged, and at times we sought to dictate our terms. Now, he was embarrassed by us, and he didn't care that his slamming of America to world leaders gave us less leverage and hurt our moral standing on critical issues. And his talking America down routine has only gotten worse with the current occupant of the White House. The American experiment in democracy is in a danger like it hasn't been in my lifetime. It's in danger this hour. The anti-voter laws that many states have passed are part of an intentional effort to exclude Americans from participating in our democracy. There's corruption here at home especially when it comes to how people pay taxes, or rather, how they don't. Racism, the ugly poison that has long haunted and plagued our nation. A racist nation that also hates women, if we can still use that word, woman. Now, remember, Biden also believes our Supreme Court now is misogynist. Another great message for our children and the world. It's a realization of an extreme ideology so extreme that women and girls were forced to bear their rapist child. Now, hearing all this, of, co of course, European leaders wouldn't think twice about jumping in the scrum to slam the court and do it as well. I mean, Biden's doing it. Why can't they? And even think it was perfectly fine to make our taxpayers foot the lion's share of the bill for this pointless war at this point in Ukraine. Because when they all agree today that they are unanimous, that the alliance will support Ukraine for the long haul, I'll tell you what that means. That means that Americans should be prepared to fund a disproportionate share of the war efforts for years. Biden's national security advisor apparently thinks money grows on trees. And he's seeing reports. I've seen the reports of... Uh, specific details around advanced air defense capabilities that the United States is preparing to provide to the Ukrainians. I can confirm that we are, in fact, in the process of finalizing a package that includes advanced air defense capabilities. Okay, this is complete madness. Ukraine is losing the war, and Biden has no idea what he's doing. And who trusts Millie and Austin? I don't. Now, back in May, Congress approved a staggering $40 billion Ukraine aid package which included $5 billion in what we were told, Congress assured us, was emergency food assistance to the area's hardest hit. They, they were hardest hit, by the way, for starvation. That was the risk they were facing due to the conflict and all the agriculture lost. 
But according to Politico today, more than a month after Congress approved that emergency measure, USAID and the Biden administration have yet to send out any of the funds. Even as President Joe Biden and his top officials increase their public warnings about the war's impact on food prices and growing world hunger in, in, in various speeches at, and at the G7 meetings. Okay. <laughs> the guy who can't handle $5 billion thinks he should be trusted with mobilizing $600 billion. Think of the potential for waste, fraud, and abuse there, especially since Biden is betting on a trifecta, a globalist, greeniac, DEI fantasy. Collectively, we aim to mobilize nearly $600 billion from the G7 by 2027. These strategic investments are areas of critical to sustainable development and to our shared global stability, health and health security, digital connectivity, gender equality and equity, climate and energy security. That's a socialist mouthful, isn't it? Why are they all wearing creepy costumes all the same? Now, when Biden says collectively, as he did just there, and he wants to mobilize the $600 billion, who do you think is going to pick up most of that tab? You. That's who. But don't worry, because our allies are cheering Biden as he also sells out U.S. manufacturing. The U.S. government just facilitated a new partnership between two American firms and the government of Angola to invest $2 billion in building a new solar projects in Angola. It's a partnership that will help Angola meet its climate goals. Of course, our allies are thrilled about all of this. After all, you, America, you have a lot to atone for, especially under Trump, when our economy was far outpacing Europe's. Remember, we were energy independent, wages were rising, no inflation, families could actually go on vacation. People were pretty optimistic. That made the elites, especially the Euro elites, absolutely miserable. If Americans could be so free and prosperous, it was only a matter of time before their own people demanded better results from them in Europe. Just look at the trouble Macron is having now. Thus, of course, they recoiled at America first. They prefer America apologetic. Biden's going to give them anything they want. And they're going to, he's going to ask zero in return, just how they like it. The time has come for Republicans to ask themselves which countries are truly allies of the United States and which are only allies of the Democratic Party. Because if the purpose of this alliance is to promote abortion, climate mandates, and endless pointless spending on wars, how can we ask American soldiers, many of whom, by the way, are devoutly religious, to fight and possibly die for it? For that matter, if our allies are only willing to help the Democrats, but never the Republicans, why should Republicans in Congress fund this alliance at all? And that's the angle. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.